Just outside Houston, Texas, in the tiny town of Magnolia, lives Pam Sweeney and her array of unusual animals. Pam runs an educational company that performs outreach to children and teaches them about exotic animals. Being able to take all of these animals that have been hand-raised by me and talk about where they came from, what they eat, all the different unique characteristics. Being able to bring these animals to locations and share that is very rewarding. Danny, come on, buddy boy. Come on, come get your bread. The animals, they make her happy. If some, something inside of her drives her, the passion for them. Pacadu Exotics has over 60 animals with origins from all over the world. Among these lucky rescues are kinkajous and quartamundis, as well as one animal with a strong set of lungs. Tommy, a miniature donkey. While burros of any size are hardly a rare sight in Texas, this little fellow was about to find a hulking new friend and get a new lease on life. I saw, kind of at a distance, some donkeys behind this mobile home. Then I saw a little bitty one out there that was just emaciated, skin and bones. And we were both kind of looking at each other like, we need to get this animal out of here. Because there was no light in his eyes. There was no joy. So I get out of the truck, knock on the door, and a woman answers the door. And I said, I saw that little donkey from the road and was wondering if you'd be interested in selling him. With an agreement made, Pam brought the weak, lifeless donkey home only to make a grim discovery. Tommy, come to find out, was full of parasites, was in very bad condition. The vet said on a scale of one to 10, one being worse, 10 being the best, he was a two, barely a two. Despite the odds, and thanks to the love and attention from his new caregivers, Tommy was able to pull through. Today, he's a healthy donkey, but he's not quiet. You're sleeping real good on a Saturday morning, and you hear, oh, I mean, that right there, <laughs> that pretty much kills the, OK, that's the alarm clock, get up. And he's ornery. Ah! Donkeys are just a little bit ornery. He drugged me for a while, and I thought I was going to fall flat on my face. Notoriously stubborn, donkeys are dogged workers with hardy physiques. They've been used as beasts of burden for more than 5,000 years and can pull up to twice their body weight on level ground. Social creatures, burros need the company of others. And while Tommy forged a strong bond with Pam as she brought him back to health, Nobody could have guessed that the mini donkey's best friend by far would be Humphrey, a towering Arabian camel. Almost immediate, they took up to each other like they've been pals for life. I see people different times of the day stop they go to the fence, they're taking pictures of them, Humphrey and Tommy, wanting to pet them. Everybody loves them. In the little world of Magnolia, Texas, they're pretty famous. So how did a loping camel wind up in this little world? A breeder friend had a baby camel, and Pam couldn't help herself. I actually got him at four weeks old. Got a bottle five, six times a day for a year. The top of his back came up to my belly button, is how tiny he was. And he followed me around. He thought I was his mama. And I fell in love with him. Three-year-old Humphrey is a single-humped camel or dromedary. Rather than store water, the hump is actually composed of fat deposits, which can be metabolized into water, allowing a camel to survive for up to seven months without drinking, weight-displacing feet, closable nostrils, plus sand-shielding eyelashes, and a third eyelid further suit the dromedary to desert life. And Humphrey stands a whopping six foot five from foot to hump, over three times the size of Tommy, the mini donkey. But these two prove that size isn't everything. 
you have something so small, something so big, so separate from each other as creatures that show, literally show, a love for each other. With Tommy and Humphrey, you've got this sickly baby donkey, and he's been rescued, but he's all on his own. And young animals especially need companionship for their psychological and physical well-being. An animal doesn't thrive without the right kind of nurturing. Where's Humphrey? Here he is. He's hiding behind the tree. When near-to-death Tommy first laid eyes on Humphrey, it was love at first sight. To my amazement, Tommy went straight to the fence following him up and down the fence. And I'm thinking, OK, he's not afraid. He's not running. He's not scared. He's not nervous. He's wanting to be close to this camel. But Humphrey gave him the cold shoulder. Humphrey didn't want anything to do with him. He was like, what the heck is that? You know, trying to leave and get away from him. Despite being snubbed, little Tommy kept regaining strength and kept after hard to get Humphrey. It's like, this is weird. This isn't normal. And finally, you know, thought, OK, I got to just get them together in the same area and see if they're going to get along OK. When she put the donkey in with that camel, the first thought that was going through my head was disaster. Because this is a camel towering above this little miniature donkey. Getting kicked in the face was the first thought. Humphrey could have kicked Tommy at any point. Big old camel and a little bitty skinny little, you know, donkey, he could seriously get hurt. But adjusting to a new pen mate wasn't easy for the lanky camel. I did have a scary moment. I was in the pen with them, and Humphrey tried to get on top of Tommy and, and flatten him. When a camel feels threatened by another animal, they will try and sit or lay on the threat to subdue it. I got him off real quick and thought, after that, for sure, Tommy's not going to want anything to do with Humphrey. Nope. He didn't care. Early on, the donkey's on his own, and he needs companionship. From his perspective, maybe the camel just seemed more like his mother, and that's why a better relationship developed there. He's not a horse. <laughs> he's half donkey. I mean, he's, he's half. Thinks he's a camel, thinks he's a horse. Pam he eased the two together again slowly. But Tommy was chomping at the bit for Humphrey. Tommy was all over Humphrey. He was jumping up on his neck. He was biting his rear end. He would do figure eights underneath his belly and around the front, back under the belly and back around the rear end. And to my amazement, Humphrey would just roll his neck back and kind of nip him and bite him. And it was obvious Humphrey was enjoying it. And they started playing. They've developed a style of play that they can enjoy together. The outcome of this is that the donkey is really doing terrifically well and is now completely healthy and a, and a well-developed donkey. And this is the physical benefit of emotional support. What are you guys doing? This unlikely duo would have never met without Pam's unrelenting devotion to animals. But experiencing the friendship between a donkey and a camel is a reward in itself. Before Tommy and Humphrey, I didn't have that extent of seeing how wonderful it is for two animals to cohabitate together, to get along, to follow each other, to play, to sleep next to each other. It's never ending with them. So it just has put a new perspective on things for me. One thing I learned from Tommy and Humphrey would be to keep an open mind to people, not like judge a book by its cover, because I could end up being friends with any type of person, regardless of how much different they are from me. With open minds and hearts, Tommy and Humphrey's caregivers maintain high hopes for the improbable pair. They don't ever get tired of each other. Yeah, they're like the best friends in animals ever. Yeah, I see this as a definite long-term thing. Yeah. A forever and ever thing. The bond just gets tighter. They bond. It's something the human race can learn from. The two-legged critters, race, nationality, age, whatever it is, we can all learn from animals.